Good morning, everyone. Hello. So I'm Vivian Benjamin. I'm one of the summer interns here at the church, and I have been kind of in charge of the program for our kids ministry called Power Kids. And this Sunday, we are having a kind of special worship time. So instead of having a normal band like we usually do, we are having Power Kids worship. So on Sunday mornings after the service, normally Power Kids goes and we go into the hub and we have our own worship time with videos with actions. So instead of doing that, we're gonna have it in the regular service. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be actions on the screen and the words on the screen, but also uh, Joel and Isabel are here with me. And so yeah, if you guys just wanna get involved, I know it's a little different than normal, but please feel free to stand up, um, do the actions with us and just worship God together. Yeah, so Elijah, if you can put on the first song. Yeah, let's give them a hand. Let's give God a hand. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Welcome this morning. How's everyone doing today? You're all awake? Good, on a long weekend? Yeah, so glad that you're here to join us this morning. Thank you guys, Vivian and Isabel and Joel, um, for leading us in worship this morning. Kids, let's see you out there this morning. Let's see you dancing and doing the actions. And adults, come on, this is not just for kids, right? We want to see the actions. And, and while we're doing this, Let's be praising God. He is a good, good Father. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you that you are a good, good Father. 
I thank you this morning, Lord, that your presence is here amongst us. Father, we just ask that you would speak to each heart here this morning, Lord, that you would open up our souls, that you would open up the eyes of our hearts, as it says in Ephesians, Lord, to see you, to worship you, um, God, just to enjoy each other as a church family this morning. And may your presence be thick amongst us, Father. We thank you for the spoken word that Roy is going to bring today. He's going to open up your scriptures. I pray that that would touch each heart this morning, Lord, and that we would all go away just a little bit different than we came in this morning, having had an encounter with you, which we can take into our personal lives, our personal devotional time with you, our relationships with others this week. So be blessed and be honored and glorified this morning, Lord. Amen. As we are worshiping this morning, as we always do, there's a microphone here that's available for anyone who wants to give a testimony, a word of encouragement, something to build up the church. Come and see me, and in between songs, I would love to have you share what the Lord has laid on your heart for the encouragement of the church. Let's worship together. Now join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God. So that was good in every way. And so a lot of these songs are from different VBSs that we've done as a church. Um, and the next one is called Never Let Go of Me. And it just talks about how God is always by our side and never lets us go. Thanks for watching Life Tree Kids.
And then next up, we have a song called To God Be the Glory. And this one might be a little bit more familiar to you, um, but we did it at our Roar VBS, which was kind of safari themed, as you'll see. <laughs> have our last song which is kind of a more fun one um, it's called whole lot of change so I want to invite the power kids some of you guys who um, are in that on Sunday mornings if you guys want to come up on the stage um, and do the actions with us that would be really cool so yeah Kids, even if you don't know the actions or the song, come up anyway. Come on up and have fun dancing and get the adults dancing too.
the same. So that was the end of our Power Kids worship. Thanks so much for worshiping with us, guys. All right, please be seated, everybody. Let's just pray. Father, I thank you for this time of worship. I thank you for the kids that participated and the adults. But most of all, God, we thank you that you are a great God. Thank you. You are a God of change. You are there with us as things change, as things progress through life, difficult times and good times, Lord. Lord, the joy of the Lord is always with us. So we just thank you for that. Lord, I just pray a blessing on the rest of our morning as we continue to worship you and hear from you. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much, kids. Thank you, Vivian, for putting it together with your great leaders, Isabel and Joel. Let's give them a hand. We thought about myself and Joe Nashif leading the dancing, but we decided against that. No. <laughs> Um, so welcome, welcome. If you are new at Milton Bible Church, uh, welcome. We've got a connect desk just outside the door here to the right. Please go and say hello to somebody standing there. We have a gift for you, a packet that tells you about Milton Bible Church, a mug, a bookmark, some chocolate. So please go and take advantage of that. That'll be wonderful. Um, for offering, we um, are not passing offering plates around. There's a table just outside the door where there's envelopes, and you can give there with a check or cash, and you can give online, miltonbiblechurch.ca. Thank you very much for, your, for all your faithful giving. Um, now, we announced it last week, and we're going to do it again. We have a video for you that we want to show about our weekend away coming up in September. Hit it test, test, test. Check, check, check. Hey, Milton Bible Church, Mark Strickland here, inviting you to come on out to the best weekend getaway the GTA has to offer right here at Fair Havens with Milton Bible Church. We're taking the whole church family to this wonderful retreat center for one weekend and one weekend only, September 23rd to 25th. 2022, Fair Havens is totally loaded with all the best amenities any church family like ours could possibly need. Nature trails, bike trails, gaga ball, pickleball, softball, baseball, whatever ball you're into, we got it all. Amazing accommodations, five full meals. The whole gang's gonna be here and this place is packing with fun for everyone. Let me give you five reasons to join us. You're going to get to know people at NBC. Who doesn't want more friends? Two, you're going to have the most fun of 2022. No questions. Three, we're pumping fuel for your soul this weekend with awesome worship and Bible teaching sessions. Get ready to grow. Four, I'll personally be painting a picture towards the future of Milton Bible Church, challenging you to imagine what God has in store for us. And five, the last reason to join us, you're not gonna believe it. We're offering the friends and family discount. This retreat is completely free. We must be losing our minds. We're basically giving this retreat away. You get a retreat, and you get a retreat, and you get a retreat, and you get a retreat. A retreat for everybody. We don't want you to miss out on any of this church excitement. So here's what you have to do. Head on over to miltonbiblechurch.ca and register yourself and your family today. If you don't register, you don't go. So make sure you register so that you go. That's www.miltonbiblechurch.ca to sign up Friday, September 23rd to Sunday, September 25th. Completely free. Looking forward to seeing you and your fam at the church event of the year, NBC Weekend Away at Fair Havens. Be there. Well, Mark, I don't know if I can match that crazy uh, car energy salesman, but I can't wait to see you bring that energy to the <laughs> cardboard boat race. That's going to be so much fun. Well, listen, it just comes naturally when we're talking about such an exciting weekend. And watch me row that boat away, man. It's going to be great. It is going to be a wonderful weekend at Fair Havens when we bring the whole church family up, celebrate God together, be together, have fun together. And it's been a few years since we've been able to be That's up right. here. What, like over two years probably, right? Yeah, 2019. Uh, we're so excited. We can safely rent out Fair Havens. 
and make sure you book it on your calendar, September 23rd to 25th. This is such an important weekend away for our church family that we offer it free of charge. We wanna have everyone up, every man, woman, and child up because it's such an important time to move the church forward one step uh, together. That's right. You know, as I've been getting to know many of you in the church family, the number one thing I hear over and over again from people is how big this weekend away has been for people in terms of making community, in terms of catching the vision and the mission of the church. Uh, I know for so many people, this was one of the most important moments in their journey with Milton Bible, and it will continue to be one of the most important moments. So make sure you're there, church family. So come on up. We're going to be friends together in Christ. If you don't know many folks in the church, by the time you leave the weekend away, you're gonna have great friendships. We're also gonna have some amazing times together in God, hearing the word of God, hearing God speak to our church family, both for what's happening today and what's happening in the future. It's just a, a wonderful time of being friends together and enjoying God together. So we'll see all of you there in September. All right, so all the details are there. I hope we uh, get to see everybody there September 23rd to 25th. It's going to be great. So Mark's, that's Pastor Mark Strickland on there with Jim. After last week, he said, a lot of people came to me and said, are you angry in that video? So Mark is not angry. It was a little act. Those who are older will remember the 1980s used car salesman ads. That's what that was done after. So please come on up. And I just want to clarify, I've had a few questions. It's for the whole church family. It's at um, Fair Havens Resort Cent uh, Retreat Center, which you can look up. The link is online. The accommodation is all done for you, so you just have to come up. And also, something I just thought of, and we will send more information, don't worry about transportation. Typically, everyone will drive themselves there, but we will match people up. If you think, I don't have a car, I can't get there. There's lots of people going up with a van with two people in it. We will find room for you. So don't let transportation keep you, uh, be a reason to keep you away from it. So mark it down, September 23rd to 25th, and hope to see everybody there. Okay, great. Um, I think that's all the announcements we have. Let me pray for the Power Kids, and then you guys can head out to your class. Father, thank you again for the kids. I thank you for the wonderful worship that they led us in this morning. Would you fill each one of their spirits this morning with your Holy Spirit? May they um, feel you this morning. May they be touched by your Spirit this morning, God. Thank you for all the volunteers working with them, teaching with them, volunteering their time this morning. Bless each one of them. Amen. Amen. Okay, kids, you can head on out to your class. Um, and I want to now introduce our wonderful guest speaker this morning. He's an elder. He's a finance guru. He is uh, a great guy. So let's give a hand for Roy Sieben. Is that any better? Yes, it is. I can hear me now. Well, good morning, everyone. It is good to be in the Father's house, isn't it? I really enjoyed the worship this morning, and uh, I made a resolution. Is, uh, next year, I'm signing up for VBS, and uh, I will know all the actions to the song. So, Anyway. When uh, Jim asked me if I'd be willing to speak this morning, I asked him if there was a theme or a topic that he would like me to speak on, something he had in mind, and he told me, no, you can speak on whatever you want. Well, thanks a lot, Jim. That really narrowed it down nicely for me. So this morning, I just wanted to talk over some of the things that have caught my attention over the past, uh, well, probably the past uh, couple of years, the pandemic years. You know, during these two years, I've had my fair share, probably as have many of you, of screen time. Lots of network news, Netflix, endless interesting debates on uh, YouTube, on a wide variety of topics. And at the end of all this, I find myself asking, uh, I find myself asking the question of, how has all this affected my worldview? And ultimately, how has it affected my faith? Our wor worldviews are easily tainted by what we see, what we hear, what we listen to. And it happens without us, reason, without us realizing it. You see, we all have a worldview. It's shaped by our past experience, our family, our friends, our education, our temperament, 
and a myriad of other factors. And we're often not conscious of our worldview. It's the filter, if you will, through which we see the world. I can tell you that many years ago, I experienced a dramatic shift in worldview. Many of you have as well. In 1980, I became a follower of Christ. And that translated itself into a changed life on my part, a whole new awareness of the spiritual aspects of life and awareness of the reality and presence of God. The Bible tells me at that point, I was a new creation. The old had passed away and the new had come. I had received a new worldview. The worldview of many people today includes some form of conspiracy theory. Now you might be surprised to hear that I'm also a believer in conspiracy theories. Not so much the YouTube nonsense, but the Bible tells us that there is in fact a conspiracy against you and I that we need to take very seriously. It's the conspiracy between our flesh, an enemy named Satan, and the world in which we live. And their only aim is to separate us from the God who created, loved, and redeems us. We can be certain, you can be certain, that the world is conspiring against us not only to rule over us, but more importantly, to captivate our spirits. In fact, the Apostle Paul warns us in Colossians 2 verse 8, and I gotta turn this on, to see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy or empty deceit, according to human tradition and according to the elemental spirits of the world, not according to Christ. We are warned that we will be confronted by what he calls philosophies, that will seek to turn us away from Christ. We need to remain vigilant. And there's no question that we are living in what can only be described as complicated times. There is no end to the number of voices that are clamoring for our attention. They're all demanding that we fall into line with them. And they're all demanding to direct how we live our lives. These voices often conflict with each other, but they each insist that they are truth, that their truth is the ultimate truth the only path to fulfillment and purpose. How about you? Have you considered whether any of these voices or philosophies have influenced your worldviews? How do you protect yourself? It's not simply a matter of tuning the world out, but I think it's a matter of developing principles and practices that will expose the ideas that seek to captivate us. In Ephesians 6, Paul tells us to take on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done that, to remain firm. Now you might ask, what are you talking about? What are these philosophies? And often it's simply a matter of looking at ideas that people become extremely passionate about. For example, there's this whole concept. Someone is attempting to take away my freedom, and people rally around that. Or the idea that the world can be divided into two camps, those who oppress, and those who are oppressed. There's the idea that science is truth and science is diametrically opposed to faith. We are defined by our sexual identity. Capitalism will serve solve the world's problems. Socialism will serve solve the world's problems. And on and on it goes. Passionate and sincere people pursuing idea, ideologies that their worldview has led them to. This morning I'd like to look at Psalm 62, which gives us some insight into the author's worldview and how he protected his faith. I'm gonna read uh, the first nine verses. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I will not be shaken. How long will you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall or a tottering fence? They only plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone, O my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, and they are together lighter than a breath. 
Well, who is this man, David, the author, the man who gave us so many of the Psalms, including the beautiful Psalm 23? David was a shepherd. He was anointed by the prophet Samuel, a giant killer, a warrior, an outlaw, a king. He was maligned as an undignified worshiper. He was a poet and a musician, but he was also an adulterer and a murderer. David was an imposing figure in the Old Testament and the story of his life reads like a novel. He was a man of great passions, passion for life, passion for his companions, passion for his God, but also a man who could find himself overcome by the passions of his flesh. He was a man who was fully aware of his sinful nature and therefore his need of salvation from someone other than himself. Oh. Verses one and two. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I will not be shaken. David reminds himself that his salvation comes from God and God alone, and he presents himself before the Lord in silence. To me, that implies an attitude of meditation, prayer, and listening. David is actively reminding himself that his peace comes from outside of himself. David is also acutely aware of his sinful nature. Genesis tells us that mankind was made in the image of God, made with a special imprint which had elevated us from the rest of creation. That image includes self-awareness. We have a capacity to reason and an understanding that there is a right and a wrong. We have a capacity to love and we have a deep desire for connection with God. And we are also given the capacity and the freedom to choose and choose we do. When Eve was tempted by Satan with the forbidden fruit, he told her that if she ate it, she would be like God, and that sealed the deal. That same suggestion seals the deal today as well. Many of today's philosophies are based on the premise that man can save himself and that we can be like God. For example, mindfulness is all the rage at the moment. You hear about it everywhere. Well, a few years ago, I had a pretty significant health scare following which I was encouraged to look into the practice of meditation and relaxation therapy. And what I discovered is the reality is that these practices have been proven to have a real and measurable impact on the body's ability to deal with the effects of stress. It is for real. And this is the kernel of truth that that philosophy is based on. But then what happens is a whole system of belief is tacked on top of this truth, this one truth, and it's tacked on top, and the practice of mindfulness and meditation becomes a path to inner peace, to truth, and self-fulfillment. It's a path that involves a pantheistic worldview, which ultimately denies the sinful nature of man and allows the man the opportunity to save himself, to be self-enlightened, to become enlightened. There are many other systems of belief today that are based on the notion that mankind is inherently good, but he's just somewhat underdeveloped. If we provide more education, more opportunity, assure equal outcomes, ensure positive self-esteem, and all of society's problems will go away. Racism, sexism, ageism, and all manner of isms will just simply go away. Why? Because man will know better. It's simple. The kernel of truth in this worldview is that the education is that education and opportunity are in fact extremely beneficial to mankind, no question. But education and, opportun and opportunity on their own are insufficient to change a world tainted by sin. The biblical worldview sees the problems of racism, sexism, etc., all stem from the fact that man has fallen. He has a sinful nature which is prone to selfishness, to tribalism, and greed. The biblical worldview sees the solution as a changed heart. When we examine that the world, the philosophies that the world presents to us, we have to ask ourselves, what does this teaching, what does this position say about the state of man? Does it acknowledge our sinful nature? Do you acknowledge your sinful nature? Or does this philosophy just simply ask us to save ourselves? It's so attractive. It certainly was to Eve. 
Verses three and four, David continues. How long will you attack a man to batter him like a leaning wall, a tottering fence? They only pr plan to thrust him down from his high position. They take pleasure in falsehood. They pl bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. David quite obviously feels the attack of those who oppress him. And the Christian worldview has always been under attack, but it feels like the pressure is being amped up today. These verses speak of men who attack like battering rams, enjoying the promotion of falsehood and secretly cursing those they oppose. David himself was a man who was larger than life, who Israel looked to as a great leader and as an example to be followed. He used, or David was, a celebrity of his time, and he used his celebrity to point to the God that he loved and that he trusted for, for his salvation. Today we have every manner of celebrity. Celebrity athletes, celebrity actors, celebrity musicians, celebrity chefs, celebrity politicians, celebrity academics, celebrity scientists, and yes, even celebrity preachers. And the question we have to ask ourselves is whether we allow these celebrities to speak into our lives beyond the measure that they deserve. They will often present us with philosophies that have taken them captive. Today there seems to be an acceptance by the world at large that science is the path to truth and that science is opposed to faith. One must be choose between the two, truth or fairy tales. Over the past couple of months, I've listened to many debates between a group of men referred to as the new atheists and various academics on the existence of God and on matters of morality, on questions of right and wrong. These new atheists are without, a, without question, they're celebrities and they bask in that celebrity. And there's no question that these men are brilliant but the arrogance with which they carry themselves, along with the pure contempt that they pour on those who hold differing views, reminds me of the men David refers to here as battering rams. Their angry and emotional response to the notion of God suggests that there's a whole lot more going, within them, going on within them than a simple discussion of scientific fact. They bristle at the suggestion that they might be accountable to anything or anyone beyond themselves. They view the scientific method as the path to truth. And there is no question that the scientific method has increased man's knowledge exponentially. And it has enhanced the quality of life enjoyed by everyone alive today. The simple truth is that the scientific method is based on observation of our world, our physical world, developing theories on how that world operates and then testing those theories. What the scientific method cannot do is observe, theorize, or test anything that exists outside of our physical world. And that has not, this has not prevented these influential scientists from declaring that because the scientific method can't study and prove the existence of God, God must not exist. They make pronouncements that move beyond the scope of the scientific method and therefore their area of expertise. And so, their celebrity status, and you see them all over YouTube, and all over the uh, media, all over the bookstores, it gives them greater influence than they deserve, and many have been taken captive by their philosophies, including much of our media. There is no conflict in my mind between faith and science, only a science that cannot consider a creator. When I look at these men and the animosity and contempt that they pour out on those who disagree with them, I'm reminded of Paul's words in Romans 2, 21, 22. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools. Accumulated knowledge does not lead to wisdom. The Bible tells us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Don't let celebrities speak beyond their area of expertise. How has an athlete's athletic ability or an actor's movie or stage accomplishments or an Instagram influ influencer's ability to self-promote equip them to speak authoritatively on matters beyond their area of expertise? Don't idolize these men or women. Verses five to eight. For God alone, O oh my soul, wait in silence, for my hope is from him. 
He only is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory, my mighty rock, my refuge is God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts before him. God is a refuge for us. David returns once again to his core belief, the certainty that God alone is his only hope. He again refers to silence, arresting in the knowledge that his salvation does not lie within his hands or his deeds. I think he then encouraged his soul with the knowledge that God is his salvation. What the world hates is the idea that man cannot save himself. What David revels in is the fact that God will save him. Even without knowing the full details of Christ's ultimate sacrifice, he rests in the confidence that his God will find a way. And finally, verse nine. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. David reflects on the relative status of men. And his thoughts are echoed by Psalm 1, which tells us that the wicked are like chaff driven by the wind. James 4.14 states, For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Unless the Lord ascribes value to us, to our deeds, to our opinions, there is nothing of lasting value. In Psalm 62, David shows us how he deals with the uncertainty that the world presents to us. You do so by placing yourself in the Lord's presence, acknowledging his majesty, and by waiting for him to speak into your life. God is present, and he is waiting, and he is waiting for those who acknowledge their need for him and for those who seek him. In closing, I thought I would share something a friend included in a letter to me about a year after I became a Christian. I don't know if she wrote it herself or found it, or read it somewhere else, but it had an impact on me, and I've written it into the back cover of every devotional Bible that I've used since then. Now, for those of you who might be new to Christianity, the poem refers to an incident in the book of Exodus where Moses finds himself in front of a burning bush, standing on what he is told is holy ground. And God speaks to him from that burning bush and instructs Moses to go to Egypt to lead his people, Israel, out of slavery. Moses asks what's God, what God's name is and what he should say if the people of Israel ask who sent him. And God responds by saying, I am who I am. You tell them, I am has sent me. So these are the thoughts that uh, Christina sent me back in 1981. I was regretting the past and fearing the future when suddenly my teacher was speaking. My name is I Am. He paused and I waited. And he continued, when you live in the past with its mistakes and regrets, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I was. When you live in the future with its problems and fears, it is hard. I am not there. My name is not I will be. But when you live in the moment, it is not hard. I am here. My name is I am. Church family, I just encourage you to turn to the one who is near, whose name is I am. Jesus, centuries after Moses heard these words, words told the world, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ask him to protect you from unbelief, from wrong belief, from a spirit of fear, from a spirit of oppression, from a spirit of victimhood, and from any spirit that the world has tried to place on you. God knows your name, and he is waiting. Amen. Thank you very much, Roy. Um, that's wonderful. Let me just get my phone on here. Thank you for that word, Roy. That's, uh, that's a really great word to bring. There are so many voices out there that are, are trying to take us captive. There's someone I've been speaking to recently on a weekly basis and uh, trying to share the Lord with him, and he has all kinds of conspiracy theories and theories of the world out there, but let's just stay close to the Lord. Um, this morning, we are going to end in prayer the 
kids that we're leading us are all in their Power Kids program, so we don't have a, a final song together, but we will play a worship song as we leave. Um, so let's just, let, why don't we stand together and let's, let's pray as we head out into our week. Psalm 62, 6, that Roy just preached from, says, Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. Father, thank you for your word that you have brought to us this morning. Lord, may we um, continue to stay close to you and may you be our fortress so that we may not be shaken by all the philosophies um, that are out there, all the different conspiracy theories, all the different ways of thinking that the world is trying to to pull us in multiple, multiple directions. Um, Lord, may we stay true to you and not be shaken because you are our salvation, you are our fortress, you are the one that, um, that we stay close to, Lord. At the end, you are the voice that we need to be hearing. So thank you for your word this morning, Lord. May we all, um, I just pray this morning, Lord, what has kind of touched my heart is to make sure that I am close to you this week, to make sure that I am in your word as much as I am hearing the words of celebrities, TV, TV shows, internet, whatever it is, Lord, I just pray that we will spend enough time so that we are hearing the voice that we need to hear, which is yours. So I just pray a great blessing on us, Lord, this week, this long weekend. Um, Lord, may, uh, may it be a time of rest, of relaxation, and of renewal in, your, in you, Lord. May each of us hear your voice uh, over this, next, uh, this weekend and this coming week. Thank you, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. Um, Stay and linger and chat and say hello to one another, and we will see you next week.